A very lovely Friday morning to you. Many thanks for joining us on Super Dawn here on Super Screen Television. Of course, it is the start of the weekend. Um, by, by 4 p.m. thereabout, everyone will start saying happy weekend. Um, like we always say here, thank God it's Friday. I am Precious Amayu. Many thanks for joining us. And it's a wonderful start of the weekend here on Super Screen Television. It's Super Dawn and Blessed Amon said It's a great pleasure being here this morning. All right. Um, it's um, like we said, the start of the weekend. It's a day where people usually start, we start making preparations to go out. You make preparations for weddings, for events, um, to, to hang out, to sleep in, because most times a lot of people don't have much to do during the weekend. But um, I, I, it, people just see it as a time to rest, but not really time to work. There are people who also work during the weekend. So um, some people loaf around during the weekend. Uh, some people don't utilize the weekend. And then you realize that by, by Monday, you're feeling more tired than you were um, during the week. So it's always very important that by Friday morning or by Thursday evening, you have a plan for your weekend. Because if you don't, um, by Monday, you will be dis uh, disheveled. It's like you're disoriented. No, no appropriate plan, no rest, nothing. Your weekend came and went by because you didn't have a plan. And if you will ask me, I'll say, uh, aside Saturday and Sunday that we have for the full weekend for people mm. to have their rest, I, you, you also agree with me that there's, there's a particular country which, um, which can start on Fridays. Um, I, I think um, Israel has Islamic, Israel Islamic, stops um, yeah. countries. Even Israel. Um, I think the working day stops on, on Thursday. So I, I also want to use this opportunity for government to also include Friday as if it is, that would be possible, if that would be possible, so that Nigerians will have enough okay, time to rest. Um, even the Saturday and Sunday that they have is really... I don't, really I don't think people. government is listening to you right now because there is a, there is a, there is a plan for the new minimum wage. And then it means that once you increase minimum wage, you have to start increasing worker salaries. So I think we should start preparing to work for that minimum wage and salary. And the other people already complain that we have too many public holidays in Nigeria. That will take public holiday just for anything. Don't think about having Thursday. Do you know how much the government will lose if we calculate every Thursday? That's 52 Thursdays. Well, for those who's going to benefit, for those who know they who are going to be on the safer side of it, if they, if they, if they can, they let them do. But if they can't, even the Saturday and Sunday, just like I said earlier on, it's really not enough. What Nigerians should do go for a better wow, way to wow. maximize time. Yeah, Nigerians okay. should go for a better way to maximize um, time. Bless it, just, that. just, you know, I, I know you're the, it's your, you're the one advocating for it. I don't think you're speaking for everybody. Well, so if you want Thursday, then look, actually, look for a better way. For those who actually want that, um, more weekends, uh, more time to rest, they should come out there and also advocate for Yeah, you guys will to have, to you find, you create an association and then have a peaceful <laughs> protest. I don't, I don't <laughs> understand. Maybe you should, people should just create a WhatsApp group, have a peaceful protest. But for the rest of us who are satisfied with that uh, Friday and Saturday, Sunday being, uh, Sunday and Sunday being weekend, although Sunday is half, because if you go to church, then for those who go to church, you realize that you already spend most of your time with church and by the time you come back, you're preparing for work. So let's just say it's Saturday. But whatever it is, we are grateful for what we have. Um, or like blessed Friday doesn't have to be another another uh, um, weekend that starts from morning till night. But we'll take a break now, and when we return, we'll look at what the papers are saying this morning. Just stay with us.
You're welcome back to Super Done and a quick look at the stories that are making the, the rounds on the front pages of the newspaper this morning. And this is a tablet review um, segment of the program. Now, to this morning, we're going to be reviewing the Nation newspaper, Vanga newspaper, The Punch, and also Daily Trust newspaper this morning. But quickly, I'll start off now with the Nation newspaper. Tribunal grants Buhari APC access to poll items. Tribunal grants P um, Buhari APC access to poll item. 100 senators elect. 338 House members get certificate of return. 100 senators elect. 338 House members get certificate of return. And I also have here INEC Way four options on river polls today. INEC Way four options on river polls today. A passenger to make mark to mark in the don't pocket oil state government. Don't pocket oil state government. And yeah, I also have here optimism as INEC gives out certificate of return. And finally, there is a plot to cripple me politically. And that's coming from the Imo State Governor Rochas Okorocha. You get details of this and more when you get yourself a copy of the Nation newspaper this morning. to the Pont newspaper. The headline here reads, Lagos Collapsed Building. Mother Loses Child, Another Critically Injured. Lagos Collapsed Building. Mother Loses Child, Another Critically Injured. Um, casualties still being recorded from the Lagos Collapsed Building. Um, a very, very sad one there. Uh, but away from that story, Amosu APM leaders decide next move. Amosu APM leaders decide next move and that's on the gubernatorial um, election that just held INEC promises to work with national assembly on electoral reforms INEC promises to work with national assembly on electoral reforms um, that statement was made during the, uh, hand, the handing over of certificate of returns to senators elect and reps elect and um, it's, it was good to hear the INEC chairman say ahead of the 2023 election INEC will start electoral reforms immediately just so that some of the challenges in these elections are corrected but away from that story governorship poll CUPP says federal government plans emergency rule in Taraba governorship poll CUPP says federal government plans emergency rule in Taraba CUPP is the coalition of united political party and now on the ninth national assembly ninth national assembly uh, moves begins over senate presidency moves begins over senate presidency and still on the punch newspaper benue rerun pdp picks mark autumn suswam others as polling agent benue rerun pdp picks mark autumn suswam as polling agent and finally on the punch newspaper i will surpass saraki's achievement in four years says senator elect I will surpass Saraki's achievement in four years, says Senator elect. That seems like some sort of um, um, campaign for the uh, Senate presidency position. But he's saying here, whoever the Senator elect is, if you want to find out, you'll find, you find it on the pages of the Punch newspaper. And that's all for the Punch newspaper. All right, taking over now with the Vanguard newspaper this morning, 2023. Ensure a speedy review of electoral law. INEC chairman charges 9th as um, national assembly 2023 ensure speedy review of electoral law INA chairman mahmoud yakubu charges the 9th assembly and i also have here pdp doing everything they can to damage the foundation of the country pdp doing everything they can to damage the foundation of the country and that's coming from the presidency if you want to find out why they are saying that you have to get hold of the vanga newspaper and read all the story there i also have here ninth assembly ninth senate leadership squamble in eighth senate won't repeat itself leadership squamble in eighth senate won't repeat itself and that's coming from the senate spokesman Obi commiserate with Lagos and Ambra. Obi commiserate with Lagos and Ambra. I believe that is the vice presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Peter Obi commiserating with the, um, the, the, the people of Lagos State and Anambra State as well. I never met with Ehedoha, and that's coming from Hope. 
Isodima. And I also have your Korocha meeting as INEC presents certificate of return to lawmakers. Korocha missing as INEC presents certificate of return to um, lawmakers. And this one here, Ikpeazu will not discriminate among Abia people. Ikpeazu will not discriminate among Abia people and it's coming from Okigi. And finally, yeah, I think an entertaining story just to make you feel relaxed for this weekend. David O, 21 Savage, others perform at Root Pinnick in Philadelphia. You get details of this and more when you get yourself a copy of the Vanguard newspaper this morning away from the vanguard to the daily trust a major headline here reads yes after arrest as a boko haram suspect mothers demand information on missing children others yes after arrest as a boko haram suspect mothers demand information on missing children others that report begins on the front page of the daily trust and continues on page five uh, just below the nameplate here uh, is a headline that reads Tribunal grants Buhari APC access to election materials. Tribunal grants Buhari APC access to election materials. You find details of that story on page 5. Obasanjo Atiku meet in Abiokuta. Um, Obasanjo Atiku meet in Abiokuta. Details on page 10. Uncertainty groups airlines over Forex. Uncertainty groups airlines over Forex. You find more details of that story on page 17. And on the bottom strip here, uh, just before the bottom strip, yeah, there is an insert here of mothers seeking information on their children detained by military over allegedly uh, over alleged complicity with Boko Haram during a peaceful protest in the Duguri yesterday. There's the insert picture there. But away from that, on the bottom strip now, Negotians donate blood for survivors of building collapse. Negotians donate blood for survivors of building collapse. If you're interested in that story, you find details on page six. There's been a call for donation of blood by the Red Cross as well as the hospital, general hospital where the victims are being treated. If you're Nigerian, please, if you're Nigerian or if you live in Lagos, please try and donate blood. Um, victims like this need blood uh, to survive. And the hospital, I think, they're saying that they are running short of blood. So um, we should do all we can at this moment to help. But away from that, governorship polls, parties set for legal battle in 15 states. Governorship polls, parties set for legal battle in 15 states. And um, on the, finally on the front page, total signs deal to explore oil on Nigeria's South Tome border. Total signs deal to explore oil on Nigeria's South Tome border. And um, now on the back page of the Daily Trust, there is um, an opinion here that by Jibrin Ibrahim, and it says inadequate understanding of inconclusive elections. Inadequate understanding of inconclusive elections. That's an opinion by Jibrin Ibrahim. And then um, on sports report, Nigeria wins 700 medals in three years. And that's his, um, a statement credited to Dalong, the Minister of Sports. Nigeria wins 700 medals in three years. And still on sports, Dembele out for month after hamstring injury. And finally, Real Madrid agree 50 million euros deal for Porto's Militao. Real Madrid agree 50 million uh, euros deal for Porto's Militao. And that's all for the Daily Trust. And as usual, we would always ask here, um, Blessed, what's the story that um, strikes it for you on the papers this morning? Many interesting stories on the front pages of the paper this morning. However, I will go with the 2023, um, well, the, the, the story on the Vanguard newspaper this morning, 2023. Um, Ensure speedy review of electoral law. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu charges the Ninth Assembly. And it is very essential that um, the, this call is coming at this point in time so that the Ninth Assembly um, lawmakers elect for the Ninth Assembly will realize that there's so much work to be done and realize also that um, 2023, if we need to have a kind of election um, that is a bit different from what we had this year, um, the necessary things need to be done as regarding amending our electoral laws where necessary and ensuring that the 2023 election Nigeria has experienced a true dividend of democracy. True. Um, it, it, was like a, it was a very uh, good one to hear. And I hope we also follow through. But it was a good one to hear um, the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, saying yesterday that from now, immediately, um, work on the 20, 23 elections will begin. And that he's willing to work with the Ninth Assembly to ensure that electoral reforms begin immediately. Um, according to him, 
the non um, uh, um, signing of the uh, electoral act into law um, you know the president didn't give reject refused to give assent to that law and then um, he also said the fact that the law was brought in just a few months you know the amendment started just a few months before the election also uh, you know caused a lot of uh, challenges for them as a body because they didn't know um, which of the electoral acts they were going to work with there was a sensitive as to which of the electoral bills they were going to be working with so which means that um, starting work from now would help prepare ahead of the 2023 elections because a lot of people said for these elections one of the things that was missing is adequate preparations so this might help but for me i think the story again is centered around the ninth national assembly okay it looks like um, there's already the issue of leadership uh, tussle the apc has said they're not going to have that kind of scuffle they had last last time but you know a lot of people are already um, showing interest as to running as to being uh, the the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Reps. And we just, ninth, on the 9th of June, we'll see that happen. But I just, I've, I, I'm very sure a lot of Nigerians like, like me can't wait to know who the Senate President or the, members, or the Speaker of the House of Reps will be. But most definitely, because he just yesterday, while I was watching the news and I saw um, the certificate of return being given to the lawmakers elect, uh, um, what's on my mind majorly is um, who will become the next um, Senate President, the next um, Deputy um, uh, Senate President and Speaker, and Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives. And uh, you know, those key uh, leadership positions in the, in, the, in the National Assembly mm -hmm. are, are very, very pivotal. And Nigerians are also looking forward to who, who will steer the, 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 the ship of leadership in the National Assembly. And that's it. Again, we will also have a way of defining our political system in this nation. Mm. What we do hope that whatever emerge, emerges as the leadership at this night assembly, you should try as much as they can to have a cordial relationship with the executive so that what we, 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 we experienced in the past few years, we, we don't see that happen again, even in this night sure. assembly. Um, as much as you know, they should have a cordial relation, which is necessary for the country to move forward in terms of governance and and um, and reaping the dividends of democracy. They should also act as check and balance because you can't be too friendly. Then you lose your your role as you know the, the check and the balance for the executive. And the executive can also be too friendly, lest they also you know lose their role as check and balance. So is the judiciary. So everyone has to do their job. But we don't like you said. We don't want that kind of controversy and scuffle we had over and over again. Um, but for me, I think in terms of leadership, I want to see more women because it looks like across, but apart from uh, Lujimi, who is not returning because she, she um, lost the election, who became the minority leader, um, there were hardly women who, in the House, who were heads of committees or, you know, maybe key uh, principal officers. We hardly didn't have women as principal officers in both chambers. So um, we need more women. And I'm not just saying because I'm a woman, but because it has to be balanced. If we're talking about gender balance, there should be that balance where there's nothing wrong in having a female, a female speaker or a female Senate president or even deputy. There is nothing wrong with that. So maybe the parties or the, uh, the, the party, APC, should start to look at that in terms of having m more women represented in, 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 in principal office, offices. Yeah, talking about women, uh, for me, if, if you look at those women who came out to, to contest for, for this elective uh, position, uh, for, the, for the Senate and the House of Representatives, mm -hmm. there are really not much though. But I want to believe that when nominations, uh, the nominations have been opened at the, at the House, these women who are available should also show interest. Because if you don't have them show interest, that doesn't mean that they are not given opportunities to, but they have to show interest and they need to come forth. And when they, they, they eventually come, come out to show their interest in um, these elected positions, um, I, I also want to appeal to the men in the House to also give them opportunity support, yes. and give them the support that they needed to ensure that um, we have a good representation of women in the, uh, um, in, in the Ninth Assembly. And um, that way, it will go a long way to, to have a great impact on our nation as a country. Thank you. You're spoken well, bless. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to we, give you a badge. <laughs> we, 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 all know, we all know that um, when, when women are in charge, they do a good job. Well, of course, we definitely yes. do that. Yes. But you know, sometimes when you have too many men who want to be in control, they really want to shut they them really down. They relegate the women and, 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 women. And, and, True. And Thank you. It. Like I said, we're going to give you a badge of support for you. <laughs> Thank you very much for speaking up for us. Uh, we're going to take a break now. And when we return, we'll be discussing something rather serious, um, something that has become a menace, not just in Lagos State, but in Nigeria. We're going to be talking about the Ita Faji uh, building collapse. A lot of people, we had their uh, scores died in that accident, and um, there are a lot of victims 
you know, in the hospital at the moment. It could have been avoided. That's the truth. It could have been avoided, but it did happen. And people had to die, especially young children. That's, that's our topic for the day, the Ita Faji building collapse. And um, we know we will always open our four lines for you to contribute when that conversation begins. We'll take a break now. When we return, the conversation will begin in a minute. Stay with us.